One of our Facebook fans named Dawn asked if the Silent Night Church was easy for a beginner to make. I certainly do think it's easy for a beginner to make. I've heard that from a lot of our customers as well. For that reason, I say yes. However, I asked what cutting machine she's using, and she said she's using a Cricut. And in that case, there are a couple of steps that beginners do need to know. The Silent Night Church, as well as almost all of our designs, do come with a assembly video. But that starts after you've already cut everything out. So I'm gonna go through everything from downloading the design from our site to getting it set up correctly in the Cricut Design Space software. So first I'm gonna visit the Silent Night SVG Kit page at svgcuts.com. Unfortunately, the church is not available yet individually. It's just available in this kit. But to see all of our current offers, you can visit the top of our homepage. There's usually something going on, depending on when you're watching this video, that would be different. So I'm going to go ahead and click on checkout, and then I'm going to log in. Here's where you choose your payment method. I'm going to use a store credit that I gave myself um, and place my order here. So at this point, you can either download it immediately or at any time you can go back to the My Account section of our site here if you're logged in and then you'll see the order. In this case, it's right here in the top. I can click View to view the orders page and use this download button here. Some of our downloads do expire after five days, but if you need it reactivated, just let me know. And then you will also be getting an email at the email address that you used for your login name with a link to your order page also. So those are all the different ways you can get to your order page. And go ahead and download it. <clears throat> so I'll click download. And I downloaded it. I am using a Mac, obviously. Yours might look a little different, especially if you're using a Windows computer. Next, we're gonna unzip our download. If you're using a Macintosh like I am, it's really straightforward, you just double click on it. If you're using a Windows computer, you can right click on it, go to Extract All, and then follow the steps to specify where you wanna save your extracted folder. Then you can delete the original zipped file. And now let's identify what's inside the folder. We have the PDF menu document here a picture of the design or designs, as well as a folder full of SVG files. That is the standard that we use for every download. Once you've unzipped it, that's what you're going to see no matter what it is that you have ordered. So the PDF document, you can either print it out or look at it on your computer. It shows all of the shapes and gives some additional helpful information. If you need to know the size that it's supposed to be, to make the project at the size that is shown. You can see that there. Chances are you don't need that information. It's just there in case you do. But from what I understand, every single cutting machine just imports it already at the right size there. The right size if you're making it at the default size. So it shows every project in the kit. Here's the church. You can see all of these shapes here. There's the roof and its parts. And anything with a score line, you can see those score lines there. There's the walls, yada, yada. So you can use this to help you determine what papers you want to use. You can use any colors or any patterned papers that you want. If you want to make it look really similar to the one pictured, you can. Or you can change it up if you want. Next, you can see the picture of the projects here included in your folder. And then you can see this folder of SVG files and each project is separated into a separate folder. Here's where some people get a little messed up is they try to go in and open, directly open one of the SVG files and that's probably not gonna work. It depends on what programs you have on your computer but odds are if you double click on one of these to open it, your computer's probably gonna not be sure what to do and maybe open a browsing program like um, Internet Explorer or something. So anyway, 
There's one photo included in this of the project, the church, a photo of the church in the church project. Each of these projects here includes a photo of that project. But what we're going to do next is go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space. And I'll go to New Project, Blank Canvas. and then upload. Upload image, browse. And here's where you're gonna to need to decide if you're gonna be using the dashed score lines, which are meant to be cut with your machine's blade, or the solid score lines, which are meant to be scored with a scoring tool, such as the scoring stylus or the scoring wheel. Either way works wonderfully, so it's just personal preference. When I used a Cricut, I used my Cricut Maker and I used a scoring wheel in it and I turned the pressure up pretty high to get a good score line. That's just what works for me. You may need to adjust depending on how well it's scoring if you're using a tool or if you want to use the dashed cut lines. That also works beautifully and the church that you see behind me was made that way as well as most of the projects on my shelf were made using cut score lines that are dashed. It takes a little bit longer, which is the downside, but it could be easier to fold, which is an upside. So either way, in this case, I'm going to say that I'm going to be using a scoring tool. So I'm going to navigate to the SVG files folder and then the church folder. And then its parts are separated out here, base, roof, tower, walls, and then the other parts with the photo. However, I'm going to be using the extras folder, a file in here. If you're using the dashed cut lines, then you would select entire church and use that. However, I'm using solid score lines, so I'm gonna go into that folder and select entire church. So that's gonna be the entire project, all of its shapes, and it's gonna have solid score lines. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'll open that, and there it is. This just saves some time using the single file in the extras folder. You could upload each one of those shapes individually, which would take a lot longer, but to save time, that's why that's in the extras folder. So I'll select that that I just uploaded and add to canvas. Everything is selected in a group. So everything, all of those shapes, they're in a group and it's selected. So without touching anything else, I'm gonna click on ungroup. There we go. Then I'll click outside the box to deselect everything. Here's where I personally like to zoom out to get a better view of everything. And I think I will just select this stuff and bring it up here so it's a little easier to see everything. So if you want, you can refer to your PDF and kind of take a look at the shapes that you see on the PDF versus the shapes that you see here. They will all match up. But if I personally sometimes like to kind of arrange them here just so I can get a clear vision for myself of what I'm dealing with and what I'm gonna use for what parts. You can do that if you want. This is just kind of where you get to see everything. So. The next step that we're gonna do is changing the solid score lines to score instead of cut. Because by default, they are set to cut, but we don't want your blade to cut them. We want your scoring tool to cut them. So if you're using the dashed lines, you can skip this step because you're not using a scoring tool. But here you can see the first shape here in the layers window is just one plain old shape. It's this down here, which got selected when I clicked on it up here. That one is good to go. Next, there's this shape here, which is this one. That is just one shape, even though it's two shapes. It's one shape, and it's also good to go. Next, we have a group here, which you can see this little down arrow that signifies that it's a group. So we've got three layers. The first layer 
are the solid score lines. Then the middle layer is a cut line layer. The bottom is a shape. From time to time, our designs include a three layer group like this. And in that case, the top layer is always the score lines. The middle is always a cut line and then the bottom is always the shape line. Generally, it's just two layers in a group, which would be score lines in a shape. So I'm gonna click on this first one here, change that in the operation dropdown window from cut to score. Now this is almost good to go, but I'm gonna click on this whole group to select the whole thing and then click on attach. Now it is good to go. So I'm gonna click on this to close that up and just kind of get it out of the way because I'm done with it. It's just a, something that I personally like to do to kind of clean up my layers window so I can see what I'm doing better. Then we have some more plain single shapes that are good to go, good to go. Next, there's another group. This one is another three layer group. Again, the top layer is a score line, so we need to change that from basic cut to score. The next layer, again, is a cut line. The bottom layer is the shape. Shapes, shape, shapes. I'm gonna select the group here, and then go to attach. So what the attach function does is tells the software to keep those together. Even though they're in a group, the software does not know to keep them together. So you have to do that. I'm just gonna repeat that for any other groups here. So here's more of a typical group. I'm gonna select that. It's just two layers in the group. That's usually what it, it looks like. I'm gonna select that top one, which is score lines and go to score. Select the group and click attach. I don't know why it pops it back up to the top of the window. Sometimes it's kind of a little pet peeve of mine, but it's all good. I feel like I kind of lose my place a little bit, but it'll be okay. Another time-saving trick is to click this, and then I can hold down the command key on my keyboard and select the other score lines that we have here. I'm selecting quite a few. You don't have to do it this way, but once you start to become more fluent with this whole process, it's a nice little time saver. So it keeps going back up to the top of the layers window, which is, it's a little annoying and confusing, but um, it just keeps jumping back up. So anyway, now I have the remaining score lines all selected. And instead of changing each one, one at a time to score, I've selected all of them. And now I can go to score. So next, I'll select this group at the bottom here and click attach. I can close it up or I can leave it open. It really doesn't matter. It might be an unnecessary step that I'm talking about. So then I'll select this next group at the bottom. It doesn't matter which one you pick, as long as you make sure you've got them all. Uh oh, it looks like I missed one that says cut here. Oh, oh, that's weird. Hmm, I might have found a new glitch there. It said it was, in one place it said it was score, and then the other spot it said it was cut. I've never seen that before. Ooh. That's really weird. I've never seen it do that. Right here it says cut, but over here it says score. But it looks like it's score. So another point that I wanted to make is that once you change the cut lines to score, you'll notice that the lines themselves are given a dashed appearance. So the software just does that on the screen here to indicate that they've been set to score. They are still solid lines. So I'll just repeat that for, this is messy, it's messy, but we're, we're good, we're getting the idea here. So I'm going to attach these, and then I will attach this, and this, 
and this. And now everything is set up properly for scoring with my scoring tool. And now it's time to click on the make button and go from there. So there's nothing special that you need to know that I need to let you know about for this part of it. This is just typical where you cut out your shapes or whatever it is that you're cutting out using your Cricut cutting machine. Once you've got all of your pieces cut out, you can go back to the designs page on our site here. So here I am on the Silent Night SVG kit again, and I can scroll down to the assembly tutorial here, and then I could play it here, or better yet, click on the white title to open it directly in YouTube, where it's easier to watch it at a bigger size, and to pause using the space bar. So here it is, and if you would like to jump ahead to the church, and skip over my little introduction here, then you can do that right here in this timestamp here. You can open it at a bigger size. So you can see it full screen if that's helpful. And don't forget about that space bar for pausing and unpausing.